Today is Wednesday, I think it is the, is it the 31st? 31st. 31st of July 2013. I'm here at the house of Milton Geddes in uh, Southampton, UK, Southampton, Hampshire, UK. Um, just to talk about your life in sound system and, and black music in, in Southampton in general. So, um, Milton Geddes, uh, first of all, uh, I think you know the drill by now. Yeah. I just wanted to, <laughs> yes. uh, for you to introduce yourself and what year you came to England and from where. Well, my name is Milton Geddes. I was born in Jamaica. Um, I came to this country in 1960 as a young schoolboy. I more or less grew up in Southampton, where I'm still living today. Right, and so what year did you come to Southampton, Milton? 1960. 1960, yeah. Okay, excellent. So, you've been here for well over 53 years. Yes. And um, um, when, when, when black people first came to Southampton, uh, which area did they, did they first mi migrate to? Which was the area of settlement? Well, I, I, um, it's called St. Mary's now, but I, I, I prefer to call it the, the Derby Road area. Derby Road area, yeah, yeah. Because everything was centered around Derby Road. And I, I was living um, in Cloverley Road, which is a branch of Derby Road. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I like to um, call it the Derby Road area rather than St. Mary's. Yeah, so uh, I think people call it Newtown, people call it uh, St. Well, Mary's. Well, yes, over the years, yeah. it's given a lot of new names and all that, but I'm sticking to Derby Road area because that's what <laughs> <laughs> if everyone. Um, um, knows uh, the Darby Road era in the old days. Yeah. So in 1960, I mean the Derby Road, Newtown area must have been a lot different to what it was today. Completely different. Uh, Completely what, what, different. what was the dominant community in that area at the time? Well, e everyone was living in the same area. I mean, in, like today in Southampton, where you have black people all over the place. No one was living, uh, I would say, the furthest um, um, black people living from the Darby Road area would be in the Portswood area. You know, right? Everyone was in the same area, mm. you see? Right, so when you first came to the Darby Road area in 1960, how many Caribbean families were there there, if you could estimate? Oh, wow, Christ. Mm. Mm. We're talking um, Caribbean, not just Jamaican. I would yeah, Caribbean family. Roughly, um, I would say, um, 150 to 200. Right, right. And I know now there's a big Asian population there, but were there a lot of Indians and yes, Pakistanis yes, there yeah. in 1960? Well, um, there was, um, I, I, would, I would say uh, at that time, um, well, the, the Caribbean would be outnumbering the Asian, but there was quite a few. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So everyone migrated to the Derby Road area and in terms of facilities, in terms of shops for Caribbean food, uh, cosmetics, were there any businesses? No such there? thing. No such thing. No such thing. In fact, I can go as far as I said, my mother was the first customer for the very first Indian shop that was opened. Right, right. And who, who, who opened that Indian shop? Oh Christ, I can't remember. His, I know he's dead now. I can't remember his name. But that that shop was at, um, on Derby Road. Right, it, right. It, it is not a shop now. Um, I think the, uh, the, the council building some houses there now. Right, right. Yeah. And there's so many different shops now. But the first one was, was on Derby Road. Right, right. So, as a young black man living in Southampton in the 1960s, in terms of in terms of music, entertainment, where could you hear you know, the music that you're into? First of all, I suppose I want to ask you, what type of music were you into, Milton? Well, in those days, as a youngster coming up, we, 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 um, I grew up with what you call blue beat and ska. But um, let me explain, when I said blue beat and ska, I'm not talking about two different music. I'm talking about one music. Um, in Jamaica, the music was called the ska. S-K-A. Now, here in England, because it was on a blue beat label, they call it a blue beat. So that's why it ends up with the two names, blue beat and ska. So the people from the outside are thinking that they're two different music. 
but it just, was just one music with, with two names. Right. <laughs> and what, name some famous Blue Beat or ska singers so everyone who don't know about Blue Beat will be familiar with them or can research them. Right, we, we'd have to start with um, what they would call the king of, um, of ska, would be Prince Buster, Derek Morgan, um, Toots on the Maytales, which was one of my favourite. Um, the Maytales, Justin Nines and the Dominoes, and of course, I almost left the fate more one of the best one out, the Scatterlights. Scatterlights, okay. So, living in Southampton, that was the music you were into in the 1960s. And soul. And soul. But where could you hear this music? Living in Southampton. Could well, you, well, well, you, 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 you could, um, in those days, um, we, we used to listen to what we call the radiogram, or wireless. So, of course, yeah, um, they don't play those sort of music. Mm. So, um, usually, um, coming over from the, the Caribbean, Jamaica um, especially, you always, uh, most people um, brought the music with them. Records. So, records. So, those are the, the, um, the music you can... Um, listen to by playing it because on the radio they don't play those sort of music because you have to play your own music um, and when you, you sort of tired of listening to the same music all the time you, you, you listen to the world as some of their music not because they like it but because they have no choice <laughs> <laughs> so you have a few records where you get sick and tired of listening yeah, to the same, same records thing, yeah. you, you, you can't um, um, replace the record you've got because there's no way to, um, to buy New records, mm. and you're playing the same thing day in day out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so there weren't any shops in Southampton that sold black music not and black at the records. Not at the beginning. Um, I'm, I'm talking at the beginning now. Um, 1960. As, as we move on, things start to progress. But uh, in 1960, there, there was nothing like that. Mm. Um, so later, um, who started opening? Were, did shops open where you could buy black music? Yes. First, first of all, it, 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 gradually. Um, you, are, um, you used to have the skinheads back in those times, and the, the, the skinheads now, they were into that type of music. Right. So now, um, first of all, um, the few clubs that are around, you know, um, they wouldn't allow um, black people, you know, they would make all kinds of excuses um, to exclude us. Hmm. You know, you, you, they come up with all kind of anything. This is as a young man when you wanted to go uptown to dance yes. in nightclubs yeah. in Southampton. Oh yeah, oh you boot not this, uh, you, you wear the wrong clothes, you haven't got the tie, Any, anything, you know what I mean. To it's stop not, black people getting into nightclubs. Uh, so they used to criticise the way you dress and stuff. Well, well that, that, it's an excuse, so yeah, they probably even say you're too big. <laughs> Any excuse they can come with, you know. Right. Because if, if they say, um, you don't dress right, and if you go on and change your dress and dress to all the dress, they find something else, <laughs> you know. So it, they always try to come with something to make sure you don't, you don't get in. Mm. But because the skinhead was into the music, now it would be a shame to um, be playing the, the black people music without no black people there at all. So gradually they start letting us in. <laughs> right, you so this, this is skinhead clubs, because most people, like myself who are younger, our memories of skinheads in the 70s and 80s were that they were racist, they didn't like black or Asian people, That's but they listened to black music. Yeah, yes. Um, um, in, in fact, when they start um, sending for the artists from Jamaica, you know, because of, of course um, it would be the white people who, who start sending for the, the black artists um, in, from Jamaica, they were more or less mobbed by the skinheads. Anyway, they were playing, you know. Yeah, yeah, as, as black people, you have to get the real early because if you don't get early, you can't get in. Not because they don't want you in that time, because the, the venue would be packed because mm. the skinny down, they'd be there before you, so you right. got to get there early. So, what famous artists came to Southampton uh, to the skinhead uh, uh, gigs and, and concerts? What, what, what artists do you remember? Um, start up with um, the, the clubs. The first club you um, start. Um, um, importing Jamaican music uh, artists hmm. was a club called Adam and Eve in Southampton. In Southampton, you know, and one of the first artists there was um, I can remember was Pat Kelly, right? Um, uh, Derek Morgan, um, 
over the pine years, yet till year BA. Um, there was another one, okay. Ooh. There was another one, I'm um, slipping my mind at the minute. Mm. But know. these people all came to Southampton in the 1960s. Yeah, it, well, it's move up a bit now. We're talking about, we're moving on to about 65, 66 now. Right, mm. okay, brilliant. So, um, you mentioned that there was no black music in the shops, um, you know, and so black music shops opened maybe a bit later on. Uh, yes, what yes. Ones, what ones do you actually remember? What well, year, well, what year there, roughly? There's only one person, um, one black person who opened up. Oh Christ, I don't know, I can't remember the exact year, but it's back in the 60s, so I would say somewhere... Uh, between about... 67, 68. Yeah. And that's Gillings. Oh, Selim Gillings. Yes. Right. That was on Anslow Road. Onslow Road, which is near the Derby Road area. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, so he started selling a lot yeah. of the Jamaican a lot, a lot music. Of Jamaican music. Oh, yeah. Right, right. So a lot of people bought their records from, from there. Yeah. And you also, and also now you start having white, um, white, another um, shops that sell that music was done. By the market in St Mary's. St Mary's. I, I don't know the name of the owner, but yeah, um, that was a popular one as well. Yeah. Right. Okay. So basically, you're a young black man in the '60s in Southampton. You want to hear black music, but there's no record shop selling the records. You know that you want to listen to. Uh, you try to go into nightclubs. And there's like a racist door policy, and most times young black men can't go into nightclubs mm -hmm. uptown. So how did the black community create its own social scene? Well, well, well I, I, we, we, we jumped a bit um, far, far too far a bit there for the club mm. because we used to have to, um, uh, our enjoyment was what we used to call house parties. So black people started their own house parties. Own house parties and um, um, that was before the club actually, so we, we, we jumped a bit. Yeah. And um, my cousin, um, which is Cecil Geddes, he had this big house in, in Dens Avenue. Now, as a boy, that, that's where everything started for me. Right. You know, you know and um, every weekend, that's where most people head for. Right. And um, settle to, yeah, for your enjoyment. Mm. Mm. So, basically, black people in the Derby Road area started house parties. That's right. I think the other names for these house parties were... Well, well blues, or shabin. That's later on. Yeah, they're you called know? blues parties blues or shabins. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, what was the setup in these house parties? Well, well it's, it's nothing um, special about it. Um, first of all, you, you have to have a good size house because if you have, if you have a, like, a tiny house, that's not good. Right. You see, and most of the houses in, in Dens Avenue, they all have cellars down in the cellar, so which nice and roomy for you know for a lot of people to to meet and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And that's how it started. Now. When I left school now, I, I always um, had it in mind that um, I want to go a bit further. Because when I was at school, I used to be bragging about the giant sound system that I left in my native country. Yeah. Of course, my English classmate, they have no idea what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah, because never heard of such a thing. Yeah. And then it, it, it got worse when I started to talk about things like toasting. They thought I'm talking about bread. <laughs> Mixing, that's what I'm talking about, cakes, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so when I left school, I, I, I decided, um, you know, I, I want to build my own sound system. So what year did you actually leave school then? About 66. 66, mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah, um, because um, I've got um, family around the country and what we, we were doing um, certain times we will visit um, families in London and in the north as well, but mostly London. With this bigger black community. Yes, and then they'll come down and stay with us, you know. Mm. So when, when I'm up there, they'll take us to the clubs, you know, because my cousin uh, was um, in charge of clubs. They, they, one, of, one of the um, big clubs in London was the Rolling Twenties then. Right. So I was taken there quite regular, you see. So I, I get used to the ideas. So I decided I want to build my own sound system. So I, I, I start talking to my cousin and so on, and they inform me how to do it. But then I have to get somebody down here. <laughs> 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 and by 
do a lot of um, researching, you know, I might have come up with a guy who could build the boxes as well. Right. So you mentioned toasting. Toasting is when... Uh, all right, yes, I should clarify for, um, for the, um, um, the people who do understand. When I said toasting, we have now changed the name toasting now. We are wrapping now for those people who don't know. Wrapping actually has its origins in Jamaican toasting. In toasting. Uh, uh, wrapping comes from toasting. Right. And of course, um, people who don't know about mixing, yeah. right? Uh, um, Jamaica is the first who start mixing music. <laughs> right. Because um, most people do just play this all in one music. Jamaica was the place where um, the news, they start to mix music. And they can research it because you have a, a man called um, Mr. S Scott Perry. Right. You know, and they, they, they'll find that that's, he, he called him mad scientist. Yeah. <laughs> He's more they started all these things. Right. Know? So mixing, so sound system consisted of mixing the music, mm. of rapping over the music. Mm, yeah. um, but rapping come much later. Oh, rapping, toasting over the music. In toasting. Um, yeah. It was back in the 60s. Yeah. Know? Um, toasting is something where we, you don't, you, you go chick 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 over the, the rhythm, right. when I was rapping, I used the words. Yes, okay. <laughs> so basically, it's just a way of breaking up a record and making it exciting, by That's building some right. vibes by talking over it. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So, that's what happened then. So black people weren't allowed in large part in the club, so they started their own house parties, which became blues yeah. parties and mm -hmm. shabines. Mm -hmm. um, and so this started in the Derby Road area in the 60s. Yes. Uh, how popular did this become? On any one night, was there only just one blues party uh, as, as, as no, these things um, progressed? Well, well uh, any one night, it's always, um, see, three um, blues parties. In the Derby Road the area. Derby but you, you always have one main one. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, the first um, big one was um, back in... Um, End of Northumberland Road. Right. You know, um, uh, I, I don't really want to say his name because. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Um, he had one of the, the first big ones. Yeah. And then as as time progresses, um, somebody took up the bat again. Yeah. And this one, same place on, on Northumberland Road, but further up towards going more toward the market end. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. And that was the, the very best one. That, that was um, Liebert's. Liebert's, yeah, 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 that yeah. One. <laughs> yeah. So, there was, on a, it's, a, it's a Friday, Saturday night, you're young, you're black, you're living in Southampton, you know you can't go into town because they're going to let you in. So you're all dressed up, ready to go, to meet people in the Derby Road area, into various little house parties that you know are happening. How do people hear about these house parties? Was it just word of mouth? Word of mouth. Okay, right, right. And so what was the setup inside? You you go into a house or a cellar, and what, what sort of things happen in there? What could you buy? Um, you know, people talk about food, people talk about drink. I want to know what type of music, where the sound system was, the number of people, what was the makeup of the people, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's a cellar, and it would be, the makeup of it would be like a nightclub today. Right, you know? a nightclub in a house. In, in a house. You know, it, only because um, you, you you observe that you um, you you you're coming through a cellar, and there's a house on top. If you was to um, if there are another side entrance where you don't see the house and just walk in, you right. think you're in a normal club. <laughs> right. Okay. And so, alcohol. Could you buy alcohol? Then? Yes. Yes. Everything there. You know, right. food a lot. Right. So you could buy uh, Caribbean food. Yeah. You could buy a beer or spirits, yeah. okay? Um, so yeah, like a club where you could eat, where you could drink. Now, what what kind? What did they use? They use sound systems for the music in there. Yes. Okay. And how powerful were these oh, sound Christ. systems? <laughs> yeah, man, they were, they were powerful, all right. <laughs> you know, speakers. What size? Massive, were, what massive. size were the speakers? If you could compare them to a piece of furniture in the house. We're talking about eighteen-inch speakers. All right. Well, yeah. biggest fridges or doors? Bigger than most fridges. 
Right, so right. So you're feeling when when those bass line turn on, it's like an earthquake. But those who don't know what an earthquake is, just want to listen to us. So find out. <laughs> and the, so on any one night in 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 these blues parties and shabins, how many people would be there in in, in the party? Well, well, let's, let's say you can't count them. Yeah. Because you're so packed up, <laughs> you've yeah. been shoved up against the wall in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> but on a rough guess, um, you, you're talking about three, sometimes 400 people that cramped into uh, not a massive hall, if you know. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so. and, and, and you can say, um, even though it's, it's packed inside, you still have a lot of people. Outside, who can't get in. <laughs> right, just, just feeling the vibe <laughs> feeling from the, the outside. <laughs> and was the crowd mainly black or was it cosmopolitan? No, you, you have a lot of mixture. Lot of, you know, a lot of mixture. So it was black people, yeah. white people? Mm. I, I can remember going to blues um, um, some night and I'm completely outnumbered. But most of the women are white, white women. Mostly white women and uh, black men. Very weird this year. And, 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 uh, the, the white men that came with, or more than um, came there with friends. Yeah. But um, most of the white women, they'd be going with black guys. Right. See? So in those days, there was a lot of mixed uh, mixed yeah, relationships. Yeah. Yeah. So mainly uh, West Indian men yeah. and English women. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the blues was the place to be. Basically. Place to be. Now, so, what kind of times? I know that timing when it comes to timing for Jamaican entertainment mm -hmm. is slightly different to British style. <laughs> I know the pubs ring the last orders at what? Yeah. <laughs> Quarter to eleven. Yes. Which is totally different to Jamaican timing. So tell me a bit a bit more about Jamaican entertainment time. No no I have got a phrase, I pick up this phrase, um, um I pick up this phrase um, in Jamaica actually so I'm gonna give you this the Jamaican phrase because it was the same year. Um I went to Jamaica and I was at this club, you know, and I said to the guy, what time this club finish? And he says to me, when everybody gone. In other words, when there's no one left. <laughs> <That's what he's> <laughs> <speaking>. <laughs> uh, so what kind of time would these blues parties in Southampton so, begin? Oh Christ, we, we, um, you can go down there from say nine o'clock, but um, I mean, there's nothing will be happening if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be open, but um, I mean, if you want to be a early bird, you can stay there. You won't. Not, the music would. Be, you might have like background music. In other words, it would, it would be something. Yeah. And just like the song we play was playing very low. You know, you, you have a background music and you can buy your drinks. Yeah. But um, we're talking when this, and things start really moving. Now you have to get there at least half eleven upwards. Half eleven. Half eleven upwards. Upwards. Wow. wow. I'm going right back until about um, nine o'clock the next morning. People were done. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, did I hear this right? People start warming up about eleven thirty yeah. and they leave when the sun rises. Yes. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> so you've got these house parties, several of them in the Derby Road area, you know, on the weekends mainly. Uh, loud thumping bassy music. Um, Scar, Blue Beat, but then as the decades progress, yeah. what type of music would they play in these? We moved from Ska to Rocksteady. Rocksteady. Yeah, we, we, we haven't got to um, um, this, do reggae yet, have we? Right. Uh, we moved from um, Ska to Rocksteady. Yeah. And after Rocksteady, we have what we call Lovers Rock. Right. Then reggae comes into play. Right. Mm -hmm. So these blues parties started in the 60s mm -hmm. and what kind of decades did they progress right up to? I mean, uh, blues were happening as late as when in the Derby Road area? Mm -hmm. I would say right up to, until the 90s. The 90s. Yeah. So 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. 90s yeah. Okay, okay, that's, that's good. And obviously you've got loud music Everyone's enjoying themselves, but obviously, when you're in a residential area, you must have had some complaints from the local community. Well, oh, oh yes, um, when especially when I was playing my song because I, I was living in Clover Road, so that was more or less um, one of you, you say one of the most respectful um, street. <laughs> you see, so we used to have a lot of complaint there. 
Yeah. Because I remember the police used to be coming in now, uh, regularly in the night. The police used to raid these yeah. parties. Well, well, not so raid, they just um, come, um, turn the sound down, you know, because were, people were complaining, you know. And then we turn it down when they're there and when they're gone, we turn it back But the police never shut down any blues Oh, oh yes, oh yes, um, quite a few. But um, that was like later on. You know, right. Um, Not in the 60s. I, I wouldn't say late 60s or 70s. Yeah. That kind of time. Yeah. Yeah. And the early people, had, um, they just come on, you know, and ask to turn it down a bit, but not close down because they knew that that was our way of entertaining ourselves because, uh, I mean, the, the police, they, 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 they do know what's going on. Mm. And they, they know that we want to enjoy ourselves. But we were not allowed in most of the clubs. So they know this is your way it's of way compensating. Of, yeah. Them. Yeah. So did police attitudes get a bit worse as the decades progressed? Oh, in, oh, yes. what, in what decade was the police attitude at its worst when it came to blues and and their toleration of Shabin? I, I would say mm, starting from the early 70s, mm -hmm. upwards in the 80s and all that. Mm. Instead of getting the better, it was getting worse, you see. Um, because I, I, I think what they were thinking that people were making money from that. And it was getting very popular. Yeah, yeah. And, and we as black people, um, you know, we don't use our head very well because there was a few violence down there where people would get beat up and get robbed and all that. And of course, if a person get beat up, then the police is going to be involved. Mm. And of course, they didn't like us in the first place anyway. So any mm. little thing, mm. to, you, know, you know, to make matters worse, that's, you know, and we were given them the ammunition, mm. you see. But that was the generation who was slightly, you know, where there was instances of violence. That was the younger generation from you. No, when I said people, um, like, people who get beat up, well, yeah, like the young, young guys, they, if people come in there that they don't recognize and they always try um, to nick a purse or rub a man or something mm, like that, mm, you know? Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Inevitably, obviously, you know, there's where you've got lots of humanity, you're going to get the odd, yeah. the odd problem. Um, okay, so that's that. But slowly, um, okay, you had your house parties, but I hear that sound system dances, there were a few venues in Southampton where people were holding sound system dances in venues, not just, you didn't just have to rely on the house parties. No, 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 that's one, uh, we get to that now because he, even my son, has, we start to break out now. Yeah. And um, one of my favourite venues is um, that St. Luke's Church down by um, Crumby Avenue. Yeah. That was my favourite venue there. That's so you used to hold sound system sound dances system there? Dance there. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Other venues where you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and um, basically, the equipment for sound system. Where did you used to get your equipment for your sound systems? Because you've got your speaker boxes, your amps, your record decks. Well, that's what I mean. You need a guy in electronic, um, and then they'll know. Um, but the speakers, um, my speakers, they all came from London. From London. So you got yeah. all your equipment from London. Yeah, yeah. And the records, now before there was a black music shop in Southampton, where did sound system guys buy their records from? Uh, in Southampton? Yeah. Uh, well, that's what I mean, before the shops, um, we, we couldn't buy the records. Uh, were there uh, other towns? Oh, oh yes, yeah, so like us now, um, like I said, we got a lot. Um, they get his family, we got a big family in London and all over the place. Yeah. So when we're in London, we do a shopping. Okay. You know? So there's black music shops in London in, London, in the, in the 60s. Because when I had my son, every, if I'm not playing, I, even if I'm going to play, you know, on a Saturday, I'll be up in London on a Friday. Right, and, right. And I'll be buying my records on, on a Saturday. Yeah. And then coming back down to play Saturday night. Right, because you've got areas in London in the 60s that had bigger pop, West Indian populations oh, yes, like, Bri Brixton. like Brixton. Um, Battersea. All, yeah. all those, all those areas. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. And, um, and yeah, and also you are quite famous. You came on a BBC News report 
uh, because uh, Bob Marley, little known fact, Bob Marley, before he became famous, came to Southampton. So tell us about you know that uh, BBC News report that you took part in, Milton. Well, well I've, I've got two. Um, um, I was on BBC Radio, but I was also on ITV Television. Ah, okay. Uh, Meridian Television. Meridian, okay. Um, my, my, um, I think you, uh, you can find me on YouTube, um, um, Meridian Interview. Now, the Bob Marley story, that one I almost missed. Because, like I said, I'm a regular London person. And, and I was in London that weekend with my friend, um, Tony Ellis. He's living in London now. Yeah. And another friend of mine, he's, he's, he died, um, David Gray. We were staying with David Gray in Battersea. And I can remember, we were coming back down that Sunday night. But we would have been coming back down later on in the evening. And it was um, David um, said to us, Did you know that um, the widow is in Southampton? Of course, we were shocked. Of, what? Bob Marley's <laughs> band, Bob Marley, the, the Wailers. The Wailers. What are you talking about? He said, Yes, but who And he showed, because he was in a, um, a London paper um, that was in Swavelin. And what, oh, what year was this? 73. 73. We were off like a shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because <laughs> obviously we wanted to get the Southampton in time. Yeah. Um, of, of course, uh, lucky for us, um, when he said it, that was in the morning, um, like about um, 10 o'clock in the morning when he mentioned it. Mm. And of course, um, if he hadn't not mentioned it, we, we wouldn't be leaving London and, and until about, say, 7, 8 o'clock in the evening. So as soon as he mentioned that, <laughs> we were off. <laughs> so this is 1973, you're in London, you've read in the newspaper that Bob Marley and the Whalers, before they became famous, are going to be playing in, in of all places, In, in my own town. <laughs> Why did they play in Swaveling? Well, I, um, because you, you, you got it right there. Remember, the, nobody have in Southampton, apart from the black people, would have known about the whalers. Yeah. They were not famous at all. Yeah. You know? um, even, even Toots and the Matel, the pioneers, and all those other, was in front of them. Mm. Yeah. No one ever heard of the whalers except the black people. So, um, these guys um, in Swaveling, the, the, the promoter, as I learned now, he was more or less um, like a, a skinhead right. from the skinhead brigade. So, he would have known about Marley. Right, so Bob Marley. Obviously, uh, as he, he got older, and he, you know, he got his place, his own place in Sweden, he decided to send for the Whalers. Mm. Mm. So they, Bob Marley and the Whalers played in Southampton yeah. in 1973, yeah. and that was the news report you did. Yes, and yeah. I was so surprised because um, even though it wasn't a massive place, but it was absolutely ram packed. So it was like a pub, basically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was you. If you lift your foot up, you, you better not put it back down because you'll be standing somewhere this. So, you know, <laughs> that's how ram packed it was. Yeah. yeah. And I, I can only remember. No, I've, I've got a lot of our, our people. Um, um, black people. Um, a friend of mine was saying they were there, but mm. I can only remember my friend um, Tony Ellis, who's in London. You know. Mm. Um, I can only remember him was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, lastly, then, Milton, um, what would be your message to the black community and to the younger generation, and your message in general? Um, you would like to you would like to give to the public. What message would you like to give? Well, first of all, we must unite. Right. We are fighting against each other. We're you, never going to get nowhere. You mean the West Indian? West Indian, um, us black people. Because when we are together,